unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me, for unto you, O Lord, do we lift up our souls. Yes, unto you, O Lord, do we lift up our souls. O our God, we will trust in thee. Let us not be ashamed. Let not our enemies triumph over me and you. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God on this beautiful brand new day that the Lord has made November 7. Ooh, I love it when a 7 rolls around. Seems to be God's perfect number that he keeps using in his Word. And so we've picked that up, haven't we? And we've said, wow, God really thinks a lot of that number. Many examples of sevens in the Word of God. Praise God. So that is the opening little song. And <clears throat> I'm not in really good voice yet, but we're working on it. We are working on it. Today we will continue this marvelous journey into the book of Ezekiel. Yehezkel. Yes, and we are up to chapter 16. We've already begun, and so we will pick up with verse 42. We will pick up with verse 42 of chapter 16, and Ezekiel is letting us know everything that the Lord said to him and that he was supposed to do, and giving us this report. And we can use a lot of the examples in our own lives, okay? If you'll pick up on that, okay? And the best one was faithfulness, wasn't it? Faithfulness. Give him all of yourself and trust him. So Ezekiel says, so I will lay to rest. This is what the Lord says to him. <clears throat> The Lord is speaking, I will lay to rest my fury toward you and my jealousy shall depart from you. I will be quiet and be angry no more. Oh, that's good news, isn't it? Because you did not remember the days of your youth, but agitated me with all these things. Surely I will also recompense your deeds on your own Head, says the Lord God, and you shall not commit lewdness <clears throat> in addition to all your abominations. Just look up the word lewdness. It's not pretty. It is not pretty. You shall not commit lewdness in addition to all your abominations. Indeed, everyone who quotes Proverbs will use this proverb against you, like mother, like daughter. Wow, that proverb has lasted. I have heard that one many times in my life. How about you? And usually it's not used in a complimentary way. Like mother, like daughter. You are your mother's daughter, loathing husband and children, and you are the sister of your sisters who loathed their husbands and children. Your mother was a Hittite and your father an Amorite. Your elder sister is Samaria, who dwells with her daughters to the north of you, <clears throat> and your younger sister, who dwells to the south of you, is Sodom and her daughters. You did not walk in their ways, nor act according to their abominations. But 
as if that were too little, you became more corrupt than they in all your ways. <clears throat> the sentence started out like it was going to get better, but it didn't get better, did it? Wow. As I live, says the Lord God, neither your sister Sodom nor her daughters have done as you and your daughters have done. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters had pride. Pride. Oh, that's the worst one. Fullness of food. Hello, America. Fullness of food and abundance of idleness. Hello, America. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw fit. Samaria did not commit half of your sins, but you have multiplied your abominations more than they and have justified your sisters by all the abomination, abominations which you have done. You who judged your sisters... Bear your own shame also, because the sins which you committed were more abominable than theirs. They are more righteous than you. Yes, be disgraced also, and bear your own shame, because you justified your sisters. When I bring back their captives, the captives of Sodom and her daughters, and the captives of Samaria and her daughters, then I will also bring the captives of your captivity among them, that you may bear your own shame and be disgraced by all that you did when you comforted them. When your sisters, Sodom and her daughters, return to their former state, and Samaria and her daughters return to their former state, then you and your daughters will return to your former state. For your sister Sodom was not a byword in your mouth in the days of your pride, because your wickedness was uncovered. It was like the time of the reproach of the daughters of Syria and all those around her, and of the daughters of the Philistines who despised you everywhere. You have paid for your lewdness and your abominations, says the Lord. <clears throat> for thus says the Lord God, I will deal with you as you have done, who despise the oath by breaking the covenant. There, that, there's the bottom line despising the oath and breaking the covenant. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. How merciful is that? And then you will remember your ways and be ashamed <clears throat> when you receive your older and your younger sisters, for I will give them to you for daughters, but not because of my covenant with you. And I will establish my covenant with you, and then you shall know that I am the Lord, that you may remember and be ashamed and never open your mouth any more because of your shame, when I provide you an atonement for all you have done, says the Lord God. <clears throat> and we move along to chapter 17. Let me get a little sip out of my favorite cup. Actually, I have two favorite cups. I'll drink out of that one soon. Chapter 17, 
And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, pose a riddle and speak a parable to the house of Israel and say, Thus says the Lord God. <clears throat> and here it goes. A great eagle with large wings and long pinions full of feathers of various colors came to Lebanon and took from the cedar the highest branch. He cropped off its topmost young twig and carried it to a land of trade. He set it in a city of merchants, and then he took some of the seed of the land and planted it in a fertile field. He placed it by abundant waters and set it like a willow tree, and it grew and became a spreading vine of low stature. Its branches turned toward him, but its roots were under it. So it became a vine, brought forth branches and put forth shoots. But there was another great eagle with large wings and many feathers, and behold, this vine bent its roots toward him and stretched its branches toward him from the garden terrace where it had been planted, that he might water it. It was planted in good soil by many waters to bring forth branches, bear fruit, and become a majestic vine, says the Lord God. Will it thrive? Will he not pull up its roots, cut off its fruit, and leave it to wither? All of its spring leaves will wither, and no great power or many people will be needed to pluck it up by its roots. Behold, it is planted. Will it thrive? Will it not utterly wither? when the east wind touches it, it will wither in the garden terrace where it grew. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, say now to the rebellious house, do you not know what these things mean? Tell them, indeed, the king of Babylon went to Jerusalem and took its king and princes and led them with him to Babylon. And he took the king's offspring, made a covenant with him, and put him under oath. He also took away the mighty of the land that the kingdom might be brought low and not lift itself up but that by keeping his covenant, it might stand. <clears throat> but he rebelled against him by sending his ambassadors to Egypt, that they might give him horses and many people. Will he prosper? Will he who does such things escape? Can he break a covenant and still be delivered? As I live, says the Lord God, surely in the place where the king dwells who made him king, whose oath he despised, and whose covenant he broke. With him in the midst of Babylon, he shall die. Nor will Pharaoh with his mighty army and great company do anything in the war when they heap up a siege mound and build a wall to cut off many persons. Since he despised the oath by breaking the covenant and in fact gave his hand and still did all these things, <clears throat> He shall not escape. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, As I live, surely my oath, which he despised in my covenant 
which he broke, I will recompense on his own head. I will spread my net over him, and he shall be taken in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon and try him there for the treason which he committed against me. All his fugitives with all his troops shall fall by the sword, and those who remain shall be scattered to every wind. And you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken. Thus says the Lord God, I will take also one of the highest branches of the high cedar and set it out. I will crop off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one and will plant it on a high and prominent mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it and it will bring forth boughs and bear fruit and be a majestic cedar. Under it will dwell birds of every sort. In the shadow of its branches they will dwell. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, have brought down the high tree and exalted the low tree dried up the green tree and made the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it. And that sits on his throne in the third heaven. Third. With his wonderful begotten only Son, Jesus, Yeshua, sitting at his right hand, interceding for you. To the best connection that ever was, ever will be. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And so, my dear friends, you have heard the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the message said, try moving to a better connection. Let's try this with this beautiful angel behind me. Let's move right along to the New Testament since we have been interrupted. And we are in Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. I hope you all read Scott's notes to us the other day. If not, if you have time, go back and even write them out. <clears throat> I write down everything that he tells us. All right, Hebrews 8, beginning with verse 1. <clears throat> Now, this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Whew, didn't we just cover that? A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man for Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one, capital O on one, also have something to offer. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. God gave him the pattern, didn't he? But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry 
inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second one. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. And this is our day and age, isn't it? And I will be their God and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother saying, know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds, and I will remember no more. In that, he says, a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete now, what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Woo! <clears throat> and we leave right there on that kind of a note. And we move right along to Psalm 106. Yeah, we're doing pretty good on time. Psalm 106, we already began reading it yesterday. And so we will pick up with verse 13, okay? Psalm 106, 13. They, Israel, and we just covered this, soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel, but they lusted exceedingly in the wilderness, and they tested God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but he sent leanness, into their soul. When they envied Moses in the camp and Aaron, the saint of the Lord, the earth opened up and swallowed Dathan and covered the faction of Abraham. A fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf in Horeb and worshiped the molded image. Thus, they changed their glory into the image of an ox that eats grass. They changed their glory into an animal. They forgot God, their savior, who had done great things in Egypt wondrous works in the land of Ham, awesome things by the Red Sea. Therefore, he said that he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he destroy them. And then, after all of that, and he brings them in to the promised land, then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his word, but they complained in their tents and did not heed the voice of the Lord. Therefore, he raised his hand in an oath against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their descendants among the nations and to scatter them in the lands. And here we're living on the side of them coming out of that 2,000 years of being 
cast everywhere in the world, totally separated, and now they are a nation again. It is God's hand of mercy and grace and miracle. Verse 28, they joined themselves also to Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices made to the dead. Thus they provoked him to anger with their deeds, and the plague broke out among them. And then Phinehas stood up and intervened, and the plague was stopped, and that was accounted to him for righteousness to all generations forevermore, forevermore. Hallelujah to that, because here we are in one of the forevermore generations later. All right, we wrap it up, my precious friends, my dear brothers and sisters, and I pray some new people, maybe you showed up today, welcome, if you did. We pray that you will open up your Bible and follow along with us. We will wrap it up with Proverbs 27, verses 7 through 9. Proverbs 27, 7 through 9. Connie's written it right on there for you. A satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Like a bird that wanders from its nest is a man who wanders from his place. <clears throat> Ointment and perfume delight the heart. And the sweetness of a man's friend gives delight by hearty counsel. Oh, such beautiful things to think on with those proverbs. Awesome. Let's wrap it up with prayer. <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters, uh, I wrote down that tomorrow, November 8th, there's going to be a total lunar eclipse. I didn't say much about the east seeing it, but you might look that up. You might look that up and find out it was like four in the morning or something. A total lunar eclipse. Okay? All right. Precious Father, we come to you in prayer, Lord, and we could just rejoice and rejoice and rejoice in your word. We thank you, Lord, for this portion for today of your word. And that as we read your word every day, Lord, by the end of the year, December 31st, we'll, we will have read the entire Old Testament, New Testament, and the Psalms and the Proverbs twice. Oh, hallelujah. And then come January 1, we will begin all over again. We will begin all over again. Genesis 1, Matthew 1. Psalm 1, Proverb 1. Glory. That's exciting. I pray that we're all here. We might be going to heaven. <laughs> Who knows? Father God, <clears throat> We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord. We pray for her peace today. Today, Lord. <clears throat> With all these enemies, we pray. And we know that your right hand loves and protects your people. And you're still bringing them home right in the face of all the enemies. There's nothing they can do to stop it. So we trust you, Lord. You have a plan, and you are working out that plan on a national basis, a world basis, and an individual life basis. Only you could do that. It's so amazing, Lord. We want to thank you today. We want to thank you what you're doing in our lives and how you're causing us to grow in, in you. To become more like you, Jesus, is our desire. And that's what we ask you for. Help us. Help us, Holy Spirit, you wonderful helper, you comforter, you guide. Please, Holy Spirit, move in our lives. Move in our lives. We welcome you. 
We welcome you. We invite you to come in. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father God, I'd ask you would be with the Knesset. And uh, Father God, I'm, <clears throat> I'm very happy to see that there are some moves toward my precious dear friend, Bibi Netanyahu, wonderful, wonderful leader, anointed by God. Oh, he's not finished with Bibi's life. <clears throat> no, he's not finished with Bibi's life. He has more for him to do. And I praise the Lord for it. Father, have your will and your way in your precious Israel today. And with much transportation, bringing your people home. And Lord, we turn our thoughts to America. <clears throat> and Father God, I want to praise you. For you are revealing every lying, dirty thing that has been going on. Oh yes, shining the light of truth. Your light. And we thank you for it, Lord. <coughs> we give you praise. Wake up those, Lord, who have been deceived. Wake them up to see the truth. And Lord, we're asking that your hand be on our elections coming. But your hand, turn hearts to vote for who you want in Jesus' mighty name. <coughs> Father God, I want to hold up this precious man, Jim, that was in this bad car accident, many entries. Lord, I'm asking you to heal his right wrist fracture. He needs that so much. He was a truck driver by trade. He needs the strength and healing in his hands, in his arms. Heal all the other wounds that happened to him in the accident, Lord. Every, every place on his body where healing is needed. Please heal him, Lord. Please heal him. And I'm asking you, Lord, to please heal every one mentioned by all your sons and daughters, <clears throat> by all your friends, Lord, who have a request this morning. We know you hear. There's no request. There's not even a thought that you don't hear and know. And so, Lord, I'd ask you to draw us all unto you. <clears throat> that we would worship you and thank you and praise you today. And then we would lift up the cares and the concerns and then leave them with you and have faith to know you are working on it and that you will bring good out of every bad thing. Hallelujah. We ask you, please, Lord, to do that. Raise up good leadership in America. <clears throat> I pray for our legally elected President Trump and his family. I pray for him. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for his strong spirit. I thank you, Lord, for his humor when he's been the most ridiculed person we've ever seen publicly. But he rises above it. And it's because of you, Lord. It's because of you. He loves you and he knows you. So, Lord, like you're not finished with Bibi Netanyahu, you're not finished with Donald Trump either. And so, Lord, we pray that your will, your will and your ways come about for his life, that nothing can stop your perfect will for him, for us, for the nation, for the world. In Jesus' mighty name and all God's people, <clears throat> cried a hearty amen and went about a beautiful day in him. He loves you so much. Come to him. Ask him into your heart. He'll come and bring wonderful new things. Love you all so much. Bye-bye.